England had only got through the two bowlers, Dilly none for 13 and Small none for three. And the match situation not looking good for England. Today, 60 runs ahead West Indies. It needed a tremendous performance from the England bowlers and certainly from their fielders. The West Indies would have a hand in that. Greenwich and Haynes, the most experienced opening pair. We pick up the action now in the sixth over of the morning. Ten runs have been added. Batson Small is coming into bowl and Gordon Greenwich is taking strike. Oh, yes. That's the very best of Gordon Greenwich. Exciting to watch, but also technically quite immaculate. In goes Graham Gooch to third slip. Three slips. How's that? That's out. And a big smile on Graham Dilly's face. And a forlorn Desmond Haynes makes his way back to the pavilion. Well caught by Downton. Low to his right. So Haynes has caught Downton bowled Dilly for five. Well, this is a pretty, pretty good delivery. Possibly again that he might just let that go, but it pitched just outside off stump and really swung away and it was drawn into the stroke, which is what happens when you can ball good out swingers. A delight there for the England players. Just one more look at the fall of Desmond Haynes' wicket. Honour about off stump. And uh, so many nicks to the keeper and to slip we've seen in this match. Now it's small to Richardson. That's a good shot. Don't need to run for that. Paul Jarvis to replace Gladstone Small. Well, nobody moves for that. quicker to get on to the long half volley than Gordon Greenwich and he doesn't mess about when it comes to hitting it either Graham Dilly to Richie Richardson oh it short and that's what happened very rare bad ball from Graham Dilly he's pitched it up throughout the match but well, that one really got what it deserved. Oh. Great delivery. Really, Dilly is proving himself to be a class above any other bowler in the England side. Uh, look at the lovely swing just before it pitched and seeming still further away and Downton taking it shoulder height. and getting them. It's the West Indies 50 up, which has come off 108 deliveries. So score rate that they maintained in their first innings. Similarly, one of around three and over in the second innings. This time, Greenwich is on to it. That's four more. Throughout this innings, we haven't seen a bad ball bowled to Greenwich without it being punished. hit fiercely by Richie Richardson Lamb got it yes he really cracked it hard Lamb's fairly deep in the gully in fact he's very deep but uh, a 
It's still going pretty hard, but he got both hands onto it, so I suppose it's got to go down as a chance. <laughs> but it would have been a good catch. Down the nursery end now, and it's to be Gladstone Small to bowl from that end. Oh. That at least bowl pelt down the ground. Harper shout to start with. Moxon did the right thing. Never quite know if it's uh, a faint nick you haven't heard. If that missed the bat by a long, long way. The only possible thing could have done would be strike the glove on the way up. He certainly missed the bat, but a uh, very good catch by Moxon. Made a lot of ground and. It's the important thing. <laughs> A half century for Gordon Greenwich. Not only that, but it brings up his 6,000 test match runs. The 19th player in the history of the game to do that. And this is his 26th test match against England. It's 8.50 and he also has 500s. Well, it's beautifully played. There's a change in delivery from Paul Jarvis. But uh, it didn't affect Gordon Greenwich, it almost affected Derek Pringle. Well, Greenwich nowhere near middle in that. But such is the power of the man, it was on the up, not a half volley. And it still went for four. And there is the Greenwich trademark shot. Nobody moves except the ball boy. Stands in the crouch position and then uncoils as he lashes the ball away on the offside. This time it's the length that gave him the room, as it were, to play the shot. Flicked away, another stray down leg side. Only two this time, though, to Richardson. <laughs> At 100 coming up, off 195 balls with a second 50 off 87. Small. Oh, lovely shot. Great shot, and whether it's two minutes before lunch or not, a half volley is a half volley. A little bit of width with it as well, and Richardson lashes through that with high hands, full blade of the bat. And that had to be straight at you to stop it. Well, it's in the air, but that's a couple of bounces and a roll at four runs over extra cover. And that's a, a very aggressive start after lunch by Gordon Greenwich. And again, and no near the pitch of the ball. A really a risky shot there. No need to take silly chances, just play properly. Oh, 
Well, that was a chance. That was a drop behind the wicket by Downton as Richardson tried to steer the ball down to third man. This is the chance to Paul Downton again. Outside edge in the middle of the gloves. And even a second chance and they didn't catch it. Here's Derek Pringle now and he's bowling to Richie Richardson. Given out. Derek Pringle looks as if it was just a simple confirmation by the umpire, but Richard Richardson looks a trifle confused. Well, throughout his innings, Richardson has been playing with that left leg too far across. He did the same thing here. So Viv Richards yet to score, and Derek Pringle the bowler from the nursery end. It's cleared, it's six. And that really is taking on Embry because there is a fielder down there. Paul Jarvis is down the deep mid-wicket boundary. From outside off stump, six runs. This time, <laughs> Pringle to Richards. Oh, what a beautiful shot! Just a flick, but four all the way. Any bowler who's bowled at Viv Richards has been hit through mid wicket for four. And Pringle's no exception. Embury bowling to Greenwich. Down the wicket and uh, Dilly a ricochet. It'll still probably go for four and it does. Good effort by Dilly, but just showing the massive power with which Gorner Greenwich hit that ball. A little bit more flight from Embury. Greenwich down the wicket, drives hard. Dilly sliding across, looked like he got a knee on it. so far small to Greenwich there it is glorious hundred well worked for well fashioned his 15th for the West Indies his 6th against England and he's second here at Lords as well as of course the hundred he got in the MCC rest of the world match last year so what a return to form for the West Indies opener 103 out of 177 for two shot from Richards just needs uh, the slightest straying in direction from Gladstone Small 
Richards to whip that away in front of square leg. Lovely stroke. Yes, nobody plays that stroke in the game better than Richards. Perfectly timed, plenty of power, roll of the wrists, and away it goes. No thought of anyone catching it, they've just got to go and fetch it. And that ball's now beginning to get a little bit worn, which is not surprising. And that was a better shot than anything else we've seen play today. With two men stationed back on the drive, one at mid off, one at mid on. It went past the bowler in between those two, just like a rocket. Yes, yeah, so well, that was the half volley. And really, that was a magnificent stroke, tremendous power. He doesn't have to run too much, this fellow Viv Richards, when he hits the ball. That's not uh, very sensible from Gladstone. Just every chance Richards would have been waiting for that, the short one to follow the three boundaries he just struck and that's brought up Richard's half century oh, yes. uh, triumph for Dilly and very welcome for him for John Embury and for the England team. Gordon Greenwich, the man to go for 103. Just too short of the 200, the West Indies total. And a magnificent innings from the opening batsman. Beautifully bowled by Dilly. Just went away enough in the air and then uh, continued on. Kind of uh, landed on the seam. It was just about the perfect dismissal. It's a terrific shot. Richards is really giving it some hammer out there now. The leading run getters for West Indies against England, Sir Garfield Serbis, 3,240 and now Viv Richards has moved into second place 2,274, he's gone past Rowan Kanhai There's a lovely stroke and applause from the skipper at the non-striker's end for Carl Hooper in playing that stroke just before tea. Wow. And he's gone. The breakthrough comes. Richards, a little assist from him, I suspect. And he's gone for 72 with the West Indies total on 226. Pringle is the hero for England. Richards is looking very menacing indeed. He made those 72 from just 80 balls faced. It's a lovely innings. Perseverance here from Derek Pringle and Richards committing himself forward and then trying to cut the ball away through the gully area. Drags it on from the inside edge. Delight for England. But disappointment, I would think, for a few people in this ground who might have liked to have seen a Richards 100. Standing ovation for a great player and uh, for a delightful innings. It's Pringle to Logie.
beautifully struck by Gus Lugie. Beautifully bowled by Jarvis. Deserved that. Had ill luck right through the innings. Took a little bit of punishment as well. But now he's broken back and picks up the wicket of Carl Hooper with the West Indies total at 240. As most of the catches that England have put down this game have been put down off Jarvis, but Downton making no mistake. A little bit wide, I think. Carl Hooper won't be pleased when he when he sees that again, but just reward for Jarvis is nagging away all day. Batsman for the West Indies is Sheffield Duchamp. <laughs> that was a cracking stroke from Duchamp. Nice way to get off the mark. Yes, there's not been many better shots than that from anybody all day. Beautifully played, right on his toes and crept away through the covers. Pringle to Logie. Well, Logie now chancing his arm. Extending the lead by four more. Lovely time shot from Logie. Three if not four. That's the 250 up. It's come with 394 deliveries with the last 50. Like the same number of deliveries. That's a fine shot. Really is an elegant player, Dujon. It's beaten them for four. Embury coming on. Down the wicket. No answer to that. Four more. Shin pads probably underneath. The trousers and the helmet, but still plenty to hit. It's gone away down the side, and Small can't get there. Four runs. Logie very quick to spot anything that he can sweep. It's all the great sweepers or lappers sweep the length of the ball, not the line of it. The shadow of the pavilion just extending there and it's a really beautiful evening it sh surely can't be coming off a bad light surely <laughs> no light meters new ball oh well it asked for it it was short not quite the bounce that Small had hoped for. And Gus Logie powers his way to a second half century in the match. Perfectly played. This is the fifth over with the second new ball. Chance for... Paul Jarvis to have a bow with it from the pavilion end, going to Geoffrey Dujon. Well, was it worth it? The short pitched ball swung away for four rounds.
There's a great shot from Jeffrey Dujon, who's looked to be in menacing form from the moment he came in. The ball has found the middle of the bat for most of the time. He's played some lovely strokes and with perfect timing. Monty Lynch, earlier in the day, had to come on to field for Graham Dilley when the fast bowler was having his ankle strapped. Now he's on for Gladstone Small. Small has had a recurrence of that thigh injury sustained in the Texaco one day as all they buys despite the very loud appeal and very confident appeal too from Pringle once again the ball angled in at the right hander and the batsman given the benefit of the doubt with the ball missing leg stump fair decision I would say the partnership came up in 165 balls. Now Paul Jarvis, and he's bowling to Jeff Dujon. <laughs> 350 up now for West Indies, last 50 off 70 balls. It's been an exhilarating day of batting. But not so exhilarating for the bowlers, I'm afraid. Just four runs added to take it along to 354 for five at the close of play. A marvellous day's entertainment for the crowd, with the West Indies making 338 runs from 90.4 overs at a rate of round about 63 runs per 100 balls. That was terrific entertainment for everyone here at the ground. The partnership between Logie and Dujon was uh, 114 unbroken in the second innings to follow their 130 in the first and what a great innings Richards played and so too Gordon Greenwich at the top there a century and uh, delightful stroke play from those two men the bowling figures well everyone suffered Dilly was the best again two for 57 from 22 overs and five maidens Gladstone Small is off with that thigh strain Jarvis I thought uh, was unlucky and uh, bowled pretty well 20 overs three maidens one for 82 he'll do better in future. Embury was expensive and Pringle 2 for 60 worked very hard out there and bowled some good deliveries without having a great deal of luck. The statistical information shows that the West Indies are 398 runs ahead and uh, it doesn't actually say it there but I can tell you that England are deep in trouble. For a lead of around about